I'm Jeff, the CEO of Solar Choice. Solar Choice is Australia's online comparison service where you can compare quotes for solar, batteries, EV chargers, and heat pumps. Today we're talking about heat pumps, some of the issues that arise with cheap heat pump installations and how to avoid them. The heat pump industry has a number of rebates, particularly in New South Wales and Victoria, and that's a great thing that brings down the cost for consumers. However, it does attract rebate chaser style organisations to the industry, and those installers are typically looking to install the lowest cost system, which may not lead to the best outcome for you. So we've compiled some feedback from hundreds of customers that have used our service and from some trustworthy installers that we've onboarded onto our network to try and give you a guide of the top five issues with cheap heat pump installations and what you can do to make sure that you don't end up in that boat. So issue number one relates to installing an undersized compressor or water tank. If your heat pump, which is the the part of the system that is heats the water is undersized. What that means is it might be running for a really long time each day to get the water up to that target temperature, which usually is around 60 degrees. To give you an idea, the optimal design for a hot water system includes running it at times such as the middle of the day when you're generating solar surplus electricity or in the evenings where you're on off peak tariffs to ensure that the, the homeowner is heating water at the cheapest possible rates. So if your hot water system is requiring to be operating for eight or 10 hours a day, particularly in winter, it's very difficult to keep it within those, those timeframes and is going to lead to a, a greater overall electricity bill throughout the year. So if you've got a really small heat pump that needs to be running eight hours a day to to heat the water, then it's gonna extend outside of those hours and increase the cost to you as a user. And over time, that means your heat pump is gonna wear out quicker. Typically, these heat pumps have warranties for two to five years, but like with any motor, the longer the hours it's running, the, the shorter the lifetime expectancy is going to be. So bear that in mind in terms of the longevity of the system, if you're getting an undersized compressor, it, it's probably gonna have a shorter lifetime. So to avoid that issue, we recommend taking a look at the data sheet of the heat pump that you've been provided. Look at the electrical input on the compressor and compare that to some of the other options that are available on the market. If you head to the Solar Choice website in our independent reviews, we've actually called out some of the heat pumps where we see that the the compressor is a little bit undersized. So that leads us to issue number two, unqualified installations. So it is costly to bring tradesmen to, to site, plumbers and electricians for in the case of heat pumps. So there's an incentive there for some companies to take a shortcut and complete installations with unqualified laborers. So this poses a lot of obvious risks, including the safety of the people in your home. So it's very important to make sure that your heat pump is installed by the qualified professionals. One way that we recommend to avoid this is requesting a copy of the installer's plumbing and electrical licenses before the date of installation. These licenses will typically include a photo of the, the installer so you'll know who to expect on the day. Through the Solar Choice platform, we have collected all these licenses for the companies that, that are on our network and that they're available for you, for you to look at. Issue number three that we wanna talk about is not installing the heat pump to the manufacturer's specifications. And this is very important because if it's not installed to the specifications of the manufacturer, if you ever go to claim warranty, it'll most likely be void. So some of the issues that we hear about a lot with um, manufacturers specifications being worked around is the airflow requirements, the transportation issues, and installing on uneven surfaces. But one of the manufacturer's specifications, the airflow requirements, means that a heat pump will need potentially up to a meter on each side of the heat pump 
and up to half a meter above the heat pump in terms of headroom for the compressor to inflow and outflow air and avoid overheating. So if you've got a, a tricky area where it's cheapest to install the heat pump, there may be an incentive for an installer to, to bend those rules to get the heat pump in in the easiest way possible. In terms of the surface that the heat pump is installed on, that's generally required to be a flat and um, solid surface. If it's uneven or dirt, often a concrete slab will be required by the manufacturer's specifications. Of course, this adds a bit of extra cost to the project. The final point is the transportation of the unit. So like a fridge, it should always be transported upright. And if it does need to be leaned over in order to get into the position where they need to install it, then it should be rested for often a period of two to three hours or more before it's turned on. And that allows the lubricant and the refrigerant in the compressor to settle and avoid any issues. For installers who are trying to complete multiple of these installations a day, it's gonna be tempting for them to just turn it on and leave as soon as possible. So those are three things that it's, it's really important to make sure um, are followed during the installation of your heat pump. To avoid running into any issues, we'd always recommend downloading the installation guide, which should be publicly available, and being familiar with the requirements around those particular issues and anything else, um, so that you can make sure that the things are followed on the day. We'd also recommend installing a heat pump that your installer is familiar with. If you're pushing them to install a brand that they haven't done before, they're not going to be as familiar with these rules and again, increases the chance of things going wrong. The fourth issue with cheap heat pump installs is not installing to plumbing codes. So there's some pretty clear plumbing codes for, for these types of installations. Some of the issues that we've heard about is that installs happen without a tempering valve. Now a tempering valve adds a little bit of cold water in with the hot water that comes into your system to avoid scalding or people being burned by the water being too hot. So it's a really important safety requirement that, that does cost a bit of money, but is absolutely a requirement under law. The other thing to take note of is the fact that heat pumps will emit a bit of water through its normal cycle. So it has a, both a condensation and a pressure valve where water will, will typically spit out during its heating cycle. Now this water should be uh, run to either a stormwater pipe, a downpipe, or it can run to an overflow relief gully. If your heat pump is being installed somewhere where none of those things exist, make sure your, your plumber has a clear plan of how they're going to manage this water. It's not something that is a, as much of an issue with other types of hot water systems. So, it, it may not be something that they can just piggyback off what the old system was doing. To avoid any issues, we'd recommend asking specific questions of your installer of how they're gonna manage any overflow water. And again, checking the plumbing license um, is valid for the installer that's arrived on site. The final issue that we wanna talk about is that some of these heat pumps don't get installed to the electrical codes. Generally, plumbers will be the main tradesmen putting in these systems and often a, an electrician will be required to do the electrical connection as well. And it's very costly to bring an electrician to site. So where possible, we know that some of these organisations will try and avoid that requirement. So there's a few scenarios to talk about. The first one is if there is a power point, a three pin power point socket on the wall and the heat pump is able to plug into a regular three pin power point, in that scenario, you may be able to get away without an electrician at all. If the existing system is a electric system and there is an existing electrical connection running to the place where you intend to install the hot water heat pump, then a plumber with a restricted electrical license may be able to replace and connect the new system with piggybacking off that electrical connection without having to call a separate electrician to science. So that 
is a couple of requirements where you can get by without a qualified electrician. In any other circumstance, you will need an electrician to come in. As most heat pumps also contain a, a backup heating element, which usually are raised at around three kilowatts, a heat pump should be on a dedicated circuit. It should have an isolation switch and at the switchboard, there should be an RCBO. So those are three requirements that need to be completed by a qualified electrician, not a plumber. So to avoid any issues here, we'd definitely recommend checking that the uh, installer has a clear plan in terms of how they're going to connect the electrical side. You can download the, the install guide and confirm what electrical requirements are in place from the manufacturer's perspective. And as always, check the license of your, of your installer if it is a qualified electrician that needs to be on site. So these are some of the main issues that we, that we come across in cheap heat pump installations. So hopefully this helps you avoid them. And uh, one surefire way to head down the right track is to have a look at Solar Choices comparison service. We've pre-vetted all of the installers onto the network to ensure that they're getting the right uh, customer outcomes and have the appropriate qualifications to deliver these systems safely and to code. You can do that by heading to solarchoice.net.au and you can also check out any of our independent reviews that we've completed of all the heat pump brands that are available in Australia. All the best with your journey. Signing off, Jeff from Solar Choice. Thank you.